Hello, hello. Welcome. This is Nicole Magic Lahus. And did I say the last name right? Yes, you did. I did. Okay, perfect. And um, she holds a bachelor's degree in biology, chemistry, and a master's degree in metaphysics. She's worked as a chemist for over 16 years for several major biotech and pharmaceutical companies before choosing to transition from scientist to financial advisor. She continues to work with scientists, medical professionals, and business owners. Aside from her regular career path, Nicole has been an entrepreneur most of her life and has had her business, Magic LLC, since 2008. She is an accomplished leadership and empowerment strategist and educator, teaches personal and professional development, and has created a highly effective life-transforming personal empowerment program, Alchemy of, The Alchemy of Success. She awakens the true potential in others. Nicole has appeared on various radio shows, local TV, and has spoken as a keynote speaker for international conferences and has, been, has appeared on the Travel Channel. Super exciting. Nicole says, my intuition and divine guidance, as well as my ability to see auras since I was a very small child, allows me to perceive many levels of awareness for a person or a situation. As a scientist and metaphysician, I love igniting interest, passion, and curiosity in people and allowing them to awaken their true potential and divine purpose. I love that. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you so much for your time coming on to the Live Fearlessly vlog and sharing more about your story. Hi, hi. How are you doing today? Hey, Becca. I'm, uh, I'm totally enthralled to be here. I think that what you're doing is absolutely fantastic, and thank you for having me on. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so I love everything that's in your bio, like giving us a little bit of background and even the facts, like the magic part of it. So I always like to start out by asking you something interesting about yourself. So whatever you want to tell us that gives us a little more insight about who you are, your business, whatever that means to you. So tell us something interesting about your life. So you already mentioned that I see auras. Uh, yes. So I've seen auras and spirits all my life. And um I've had a life-changing near-death experience in 2006, and I also have survived a massive battle with mercury poisoning. Yeah, and that's definitely not something that a lot of people can say, um, so it's interesting to even open with that. So, okay, cool. So, okay, so we're going to touch on all of that, you know, going through. So, um, Okay, let's talk about some fears with any of the things you just talked about, right? Um, obviously, you mentioned a near-death experience, and um, so there's been fear for you, right? Um, right? We all have those fears of big or small, but when fear is holding you down, and okay, so where are you mentally when fear was holding you back in a time that you can remember? So I actually remember three specific phases of different levels of fear. So okay. as I went through uh, overcoming my fears, initially I felt paralyzed by my fears. And then as I worked through them one by one and going and actually in the middle of creating my program, I went from the paralysis to more of the pendulum. So it was like fearless, fearful, like something would happen and it would send me back into that sure. space. And it was that, it was that, that I was really focused on trying to overcome because that's what people need. Because once something happens, once I feel like in a good spot, then they feel like, oh my God, something happened and I'm going to run and I'm going to hide into that, you know, comfortable corner that's safe that I've always yeah. been in. And we don't realize sometimes when we're in that moment that we really need to push through that because there's so much more safety when you've conquered that fear. So paralysis, pendulum, and then conquered. Yeah, for sure. Right. I mean, we all have ups and downs, but, and it's kind of, um, I think it's kind of interesting, like how sometimes 
we're on this really good, like good slope of things happening. And I definitely catch myself going, oh my gosh, when does the other shoe drop? Because there's always something coming that is going to give us fear, which is good because it's growth. But um, we kind of catch ourselves thinking that way sometimes like, oh, this is going so well, so well, so well. Like when is it going to drop down and something right. negative or really scary is going to happen? So I, I totally like that analogy you just used. With right. That's that. the exact mindset that we need to overcome because as yep. soon as we have that thought that, okay, what bad thing is going to happen? We've tossed that out to the universe and we're calling it back as a boomerang. So it's just a yep. matter of time that it will come back because you're expecting it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So with, you talked about like the paralysis and that kind of thing. So, I mean, how did you feel about yourself when those fears were coming up and you were having those, you know, the mentality of all of that, like, how did that make you feel about yourself? I remember uh, when I was a kid, I hated it. And it, I, it made me hate myself because I didn't want to, you know, raise my hand up in a, in class, in the classroom, unless I knew I was a hundred percent right. And even if I was a hundred percent right, it was like, but what if I just think I'm right and I'm yeah. really wrong. And I just, I didn't want that humiliation. And there came a time where I got so sick and tired of it that I felt like looking at myself a certain way, it allowed me to be a doormat. Like I was very kind and generous and I ended up being more of a doormat and I didn't like that feeling. So I basically forced myself from a young age, like, all right, I'm going to do this no matter what. And I'd hype myself up and I'd be like, all right, I'm going to answer this question. I know, I know, I know this question. And, ah! and I'd you know, raise my hand, they'd call on me. And then, you know, I was right. And it was, oh, that wasn't so bad. And then, you yeah. know, there was a time when I was wrong and um, it wasn't so bad. You lived through it. <laughs> I lived through it. And guess what? The answer that I gave People are like, no way. I thought the same thing. Right. So there you go. <laughs> you know, it's right. never as bad as you think right here. Yeah. We are our worst critics for sure, especially about how wrong we are about <laughs> things, I think. <laughs> right. Yes. I love that. Um, so, and, and it, go, it does go back to like being in our childhood, right? Like we're, the way that we think about fear is definitely programmed into us from a very young age and like how we approach things. And I've just learned so much about that. I, I mean, I, as you know, I have three small children, so I've just learned, I'm learning so much from them about myself by watching like what they pick up on and how, how my daughter is really confident in um, using the affirmations daily that we go through and those kinds of things. So it definitely the fact that you relate back to like the classroom and how those fears work, like that's just shows how it gets at a young age, it starts to get engraved in us and um, really challenging yourself at a younger age. That's awesome to say that you did, you started at a young age knowing that it made you feel really icky and not good about yourself. So um, Absolutely. yeah, I love that. Um, so, okay. So when we break free of the fear, like, giving us the challenge to move forward and through it, you know, friendships and relationships are always shifting. So how did this happen in your life with um, your story and how everything happened for you? Right. So at different levels, I think that as we, as we grow and as we reach new heights for ourselves, the people around us tend to change. And it's, it's because, you know, an old friend, you, Told, you know, told me this a while ago that water seeks its own level. And I absolutely agree with that because, you know, yeah. if, if you're at your own level with your friends and then you grow, you know, there's only a few things that can happen. They can grow with you or you can come back down or you can meet in the middle. And I tell people that if you're lowering yourself, that is unacceptable. So either they have to come up at some point or they tend to slough off right. and it's not really a bad thing that that happens because maybe they need some time for themselves and maybe they do grow and you reconnect or it doesn't happen, but you're still at a different level and you need people around you that are at that level that you are or greater so that you can then entrain yourself up to a higher level. 
Yeah, absolutely. So with, with your story, let's touch base a little bit about, um, you know, what, whatever dynamic of fear you want to discuss and talk about specifically, like how, how did those relationships shift for you? Was there friendships or, um, personal relationships that you outgrew with, um, overcoming your bigger fears? And, um, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit more. Right. So, um, when I was sick with mercury poisoning, yeah. it was, it was, it took a while to get there. And basically, um, it was this threshold that had to be met because I have a gen genetic mutation that doesn't allow me to process heavy metals. So as I was chronically exposed to this, it just kept building and building and building until it reached my brain. And over the course of a couple of years, I had all different kinds of health issues. It started like alopecia, my hair fell out. Um, I was yeah. getting really confused at work. I couldn't do my job to the extent that I, I did. And I ran a group of five at that point in time. I, um, it, was, it got really scary when I was, you know, walking down hallways or standing in my house and I would pass out for no reason, it seemed. Wow. I was battling um, a hypoglycemia that was also, you know, creating, so it was all this like culmination. It was these different levels of, of that poisoning that was happening in my body until it got to my brain. And when it got to my brain, it was extremely terrifying because uh, I would just remember sitting at my desk and I was typing away um, as an update for a presentation I was doing for our interdepartmental uh, gathering. And I'm typing in, and saying the words in my head, typing it out, and I realize as I'm looking, this doesn't make any sense. It was all gibberish until, um, you know, my coding as a kid kicked in and I deciphered the secret code and I actually was typing completely backwards. Mm, so okay. I ended up getting pulled out of work, but through, through this period where I, I was battling like in and out of work, trying to figure out what this was, because nobody knew at this point in time, so I couldn't yeah. do anything about it. And my, some of my work relationships kind of went downhill. My boss was, you know, screaming at me when people would talk to me and all I would hear was, Wah, 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 wah. And then wow. maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds later, my brain would register it and then I could try to answer, but I felt like a stroke victim. I knew what I wanted to say. The words couldn't come out. Um, so some of my friendships, you know, I, like mercury poisoning, Mad yeah. Hatter syndrome, you kind of act a little not so. <laughs> so I wasn't myself and instead of, some of the people around me giving the support and they kind of just like went away. And then other people like through my, my battle with it and being successful and, and going forward, then some people couldn't handle that where I reached new levels because I, because of what I did and my perseverance and my positive attitude. And, yeah. you know, instead of sitting in that negativity and woe is me and, you know, I'm all right. set with talking about people all day. I don't care what people do in their lives. You know, everybody is a human being. They make mistakes. They move on, hopefully learn from it and do something better. And if they don't, well, instead of talking about it to somebody, if you're their friend, go and help them. Right. So that's how I felt. And, and there were many different levels of, of friendships that either built up even more or just kind of went away. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes right back to the support, you know, are they really supportive people in your lives during the times that you need them or do they just say they are and then they don't actually, you know. Right. Because when you are there for them, it's okay. But if you need them there, they're not there. And if you have yeah. somebody like that in your life, then you might want to evaluate really what that situation really is all about. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, so just to give the viewers a little bit inside of your mercury poisoning, how, how long was the process of you figuring out that it was in fact mercury poisoning? Because that is 
very trying on the body. And obviously that's a lot of different things happening to your body. And like you said, it changed your whole brain pattern. Like everything you were thinking and doing got all jumbled up. So it's huge to how you were living your life with your family, your work, everything. So how long was the span of time before you actually figured out that that was happening? Right. So the downward process started in 2009 and then it took, um, about two and a half, at least two and a half years before I hit that point where it got to my brain, maybe wow. almost three years. And then it took another two years to come back out. Holy cats. And I had to go through chelation therapy and there was um, a little controversial because it's so harrowing to the body and- um, right my heavy metal specialist had sat there and told me when they got my results back that um, he's like, hey, Nicole, I can't even believe that you're sitting here having a conversation with me right now. Wow. And I was like, you could call this a conversation because to me that wasn't a conversation. And my levels were tested against everybody that, that, or put against everybody that this lab had tested previously in their heavy metal specialist lab. And mine was greater than 99% of everybody that they've been tested. And my specialist had said to me after he said that first thing, um, most people that have a level like this are either a vegetable or dead. <laughs> and I was like, well, I got goosebumps. Like, uh, I'm like that's, well, that's not an option for me. <laughs> My yeah. family needs me, you know? So that was really the motivating factor is, you know, failure is not an option and I can, I can get rid of this and I'm going to get rid of this. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it had kids, to. So, you know, you know, when it comes to your kids, Becky, you know, I mean, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's, you know, fight or flight, right? And I mean, that's the next part of it, like jumping ship from the fears, you know, you didn't have a choice. It was do or die. Like they literally thought like that it was a miracle that you were just sitting there having a conversation right. and to what they thought would be a conversation to you. It was definitely not a conversation, but you know, the fact that you were breathing and coherent enough to even say anything is a miracle to them, like to the whole situation. So I mean, obviously you didn't have a choice about the fear for that. You had to do something or you would die. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So, okay. That's just crazy. Like how long that happened. And then like the process, like the process makes sense because it took that long to seep in like to your brain and, and move that far, which is so, oh, so terrifying. So, okay. So what you had happened was very you know, I don't know how, I guess, I don't know. Do you have, do you have any statistics about like how mercury, like how many people get affected by mercury poisoning? Is it, is it really rare or? It's pretty rare, especially when a lot of things have been mercury removed. Right. Um, and replaced by something else. And I don't know what the statistics are. Okay. Um, but I know that I'm probably past a st statistic with everything I've been through with it. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's, that's a good way to answer that because it's probably true. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, okay. So what advice would you give for overcoming fear um, in general? Because obviously, I mean, not obviously, maybe there's someone that can relate to your story more, but a lot of people probably won't be able to relate to your story. Um, but with having fear in general, um, how, how would you talk to people about overcoming their fears, whether it's small or not? Because like you said, you've been working through fear since you were a child, knowing that you didn't like it. So, right. Yeah. And, you know, there are some things that you can do on your own, um, but also realize that you can't always do everything alone. And that at yeah. some point you're going to need some help in some yep. way, shape or form. And success is not linear. You need to create a balance in five pillar areas that I've identified that are foundations to your success. And those are basically positioning yourself, whether it's physically or energetically, your mindset, which is a huge component, huge. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it goes into relationships, money, health, and 
and well-being. So those are the areas that everything needs to shift at the same time and do this versus, you know, we always, we get to a certain point and then we get slammed back. We go again, we get slammed back and then that starts to deteriorate our, our positivity and, and put us into a downward spiral versus continuing to move forward. Yeah, it's like a rubber band, right? Or like the two steps forward, one step backwards. No, right. Backwards. One and that's forward. because one of the areas is out of whack. It's not, it's not advancing enough or advancing in the same timing to get moved forward. So you're only, you're only going to move forward as far as your weakest link. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Um, okay, so I like that, the five pillars. And um, I mean, well, well-being is like the number one thing that you had to like take control of at that point was, is there any other pillars that you specifically have had, um, a lot of fear in that you've overcame? Is there anything else that you want to talk about with the pill, the pillars? And like, maybe there was a different, another one of fear that you had with it and you overcame that. Yeah. So, um, of all those five pillars, I have had major areas that I had to overcome. So yeah. that's really the foundation of me designing this program. It's very yeah. strategic. It's very, um, it's, it's put together because everything dovetails. So it's put together in a fashion that everything does dovetail each other. So you're not just working on one thing at a time. You're working in a sense that actually has multiple factors moving at any given time. So, I mean, relationships, that was huge because your mindset kind of takes over with anything. And yeah. so the health and well-being, yes, money. I had a, a fear of not having enough to support my family and, and actually live. And, you know, there was a point in my life where um, right before I actually had the near-death experience that you know, everything just took this sudden downturn over a matter of a few years. And I had to work more, work harder, you know, stress. And, you know, that's how you made your money. And that was right. completely wrong mindset. But I was, I, when all the bills were paid, I had $60 every other week to buy food for my family. And yeah. at that time, it was a family of four. And I was pregnant <laughs> and it was like, yeah, at, during part of that time I was pregnant. So before I was pregnant, it was like, I would feed my kids and I wouldn't eat. And I, I look back at some of the pictures of, of that time and you know, you sacrifice as a mom. Right. But at the same time I looked back saying, Oh my God, I wasn't putting the oxygen mask on my own face first. Yeah. So yeah, it was hard. And I mean, so you were working a full-time job and that's when you got sick, right? Like over the years of working, you got sick. So the money factor, of course, like you had to stop working, you had to re receive treatments. And I can't imagine it's cheap to get mercury uh, medication to remove mercury from your body. Like that has to be a process, right? Like that's pretty intense. If it took two years, I can't even imagine what medical bills look like and that kind of thing. Yeah, they were a little bit ridiculous. I had to, um, I had to liquidate some retirement assets to to pay those off. But um, yeah. just to give you an idea, you know, it took two years, and about in the first three months, I spent over eighteen thousand dollars just to just to start, <laughs> just to start, you know, being able to be alive more and not <laughs> just to start the vegetable pulling it out. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, I mean, the financial part makes total sense that, you know, with the medical issues that you had to overcome and the mindset of all of it. And I mean, you had to fight that hard. So of course you had to pay all the extra money too. So, right. Yeah, that's I mean, definitely, a lot of people didn't everybody even has, right. Money is just, money is always coming in and out, but yeah. Yeah. For and sure. you know, the universe always provides. So it's the mindset that you're in and yes. you know, where you're going to end up. So yep. if you actually 
take the time to build the right mindset. It's not easy. It takes a little bit of time. It takes some awareness and, you know, continuous effort. So you got to keep, yeah. Keep chipping and the away. right support system too, you know, yes. the right accountability people, the right, the right programs to help you get to where you need to be and to be successful right. and to keep moving all those moving parts, like you said. So absolutely. Um, okay. So, okay. So I'm a big dreamer and moving forward, you know, you're, you're, you're really good about moving through fears and obstacles and those kinds of things and bringing them with you and tearing them down and all that good stuff. So in five years, where do you see yourself? I do see myself uh, traveling and speaking and coaching on a much greater level than I'm already doing. Uh, that's already starting to happen. Um, I really want to empower the masses to create this huge wave of change in the world because yes. um, through the teaching of the techniques of my personal empowerment program, The Alchemy of Success, I feel like my whole vision with this was when people are truly taking a look at all life with an open and a positive mind and they see and they understand the various perspectives and they transform their fears and insecurities into a deeper understanding of themselves as well as others because through that process you get to understand others as you learn who you are and then the world can be a completely different place and I feel like you know sometimes the world is a hell to some and it yep. won't be a hell to anybody when it's a heaven to everybody. And right. I feel like that's how we get there. And um, even yesterday I had this vision of something that I'm going to be working on as a project. Um, anybody that, oh God, it, it just came through so intensely. Like I, I was shaking when it happened and oh, wow. the, the pure love energy that came through was amazing and just seeing these these steps of this project that I want to do with people yeah that it will help in that process that it'll, it's just going to go viral and and um, whoever's involved is just going to be in a completely different place so it's going to take a lot of people of all types all races all cultures all everything religious backgrounds um, you name it, and ages, everything. Yeah. And I can't wait until I can make that happen because it's going to be fantastic. Well, you're putting it in the universe right now for everyone that's watching, and I'm so excited. Um, so where can people connect with you and learn more about the alchemy of success? So they can learn about the alchemy of success on my website, magicllc.com, which is spelled M-A-J-I-K-L-L-C.com. Um, anybody who listens to this podcast and also wants to contact me directly for alchemy of success or for this special project, if if it sounds like something that they're interested in, it, it's going to be kind of grassroots to start off, but I know that it's yeah. just going to take off and go viral. But they can email me at empowered at magicllc.com. Cool. So, awesome. That excited. sounds good. Okay. So is there anything that you would like to leave people with as your last words um, for the podcast or for the blog? Um, I'm really grateful that you had asked me to be here. Oh, absolutely. And um, I hope that everybody takes what we talked about today and kind of looks at their own lives because I feel like, you know, together with love, we do make a difference. And it's time that the world realizes this on a deeply personal level. And we can have such an impact pulling together, having the right mindset, and just accepting people for who they are, including ourselves. And that's where it starts. Yes. So... Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for sharing some more insights on your story. And guys, you need to connect with Nicole. She's amazing. Um, thank you so much for watching the vlog. And remember to love yourself and live fearlessly. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>